Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from the Ahern Hotel in Las Vegas. On the broadcast today, Dr. Jeff Gunther. He's running for United States Senate as a Republican. Here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Hit the open road with a truckload of cash free play in one of three luxury travel trailers during the $250,000 Travel Time Giveaways. Thousands in weekly giveaways plus $7,500 in grand prizes guaranteed. And a new travel trailer or $35,000. Now at the Carson Valley Inn. Welcome to the Winnemucca Big R. Hi, I'm John Walker. Welcome to Big R Love Lock. Hi, I'm Rich Martin. Welcome to Fallon Big R. My name is Braden. Welcome to Big R Friendly. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to Big R Sparks. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low, and our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way, because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from the Ahern Hotel in Las Vegas. We're pleased to welcome to the program Dr. Jeff Gunther. He is a Republican candidate for U.S. Senate, former ambassador to Iceland. It is a pleasure to have you on the program, sir. Honored to be here. Well, that's very Thank kind you and your team for all the the great political news that you've made over the last 20 plus years. Well, and it's a real blessing here in Nevada to have you guys. Well, thank you very much. So let's start out because I know you're doing a lot of advertising and promoting of your campaign, but a lot of people in the state really don't know you at this point in time. So give us a little background. You know, you, you're a dermatologist by trade, uh, but there was a lot more in your background and tell us how you got to where you are now. Absolutely. Um, I've been coming here to Nevada for over 28 years. From California, right? For, from California, California, but my practice has literally been in, uh, Perum, in the rurals as well as here in Henderson for the last 10 years. And I've been blessed to really treat well over 10,000 patients here in Nevada, primarily for skin cancer. And one day, uh, metaphorically, someone knocked on my door and they said, would you like to be the U.S. ambassador to Iceland? And I said, of course, and that person was President Trump. Okay, and this was based in part, uh, you had been a major donate, donator to Republican causes, correct? Correct, but, but I think what you and the viewers need to know is that when you're a U.S. ambassador, it's not just about writing a check and becoming an ambassador. You are heavily scrutinized by the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, by the entire Senate, of which I was confirmed 100 to 0, and you have to be able to show leadership, and you have to show dedication and taking care of people, which would be right in line with being a, a skin cancer physician, but also being involved with the uh, RJC for the last 17 years, there's more to it than that. So, so this is the Republican Jewish Committee? Correct, Republican Jewish Coalition, correct, right. of which I've been a member on the national board for uh, well over 17 years. Okay, so, you know, for all these shows, I and I'm sure a lot of voters do a lot of Googling on the people that are coming on the program, and if people want to know more, because there have been positive things written about you and negative things written about you in your time as ambassador. Do you want to address Absolutely. some of the things that were, were said about you as ambassador? Because they weren't particularly flattering. Uh, absolutely. I think um, the best way to look at it is the way that the Icelandic media looked at it. 
And there was an article that said the only thing that Ambassador uh, Jeff Gunter did wrong was he was a Trump appointee. And really, um, that's really true. We did a phenomenal, phenomenal job. We actually had 120 accomplishments that we put out as the embassy on uh, the day that we, uh, the way we left, when uh, President Trump uh, left office. And you might ask, well, what happened to that 120 accomplishments? Well, it was immediately deleted by the State Department. Because really, um, just like uh, really the majority of voters know, uh, Donald Trump did phenomenal and tremendous things for America. And the only way that they can stop him is by putting out false reports, false media, and things like that. So we did a tremendous job in Iceland. Um, I think President Trump was incredibly proud of the work that we did. We put our uh, nose to the grindstone, and we got things done for the American public. But I was not uh, throwing American money around overseas. I was very protective of uh, the people who sent me there, which is the American people. And we were constantly working and doing a great job. We finished the new U.S. Embassy there, which is a really important thing to do. And we did in the middle of COVID with zero COVID infections, zero deaths. And uh, we actually brought uh, Vice President Mike Pence to Iceland, too, in uh, very difficult kind of tumultuous times. And that showed a lot of strength. Um, what about uh, some of the comments that I read um, about that you weren't in Iceland, that you were staying in California. Was that true? It's all fake news. Think about it. Uh, I came back to California for a two-day layover, and guess what hit? COVID. The worst pandemic we've seen almost in the history of mankind. So here I was in Los Angeles. There was no flights, correct? There was no, there was no commercial flights. Iceland was shut down. And what we did is we instituted what we called the remote workplace. What a surprise. Right. We were the first U.S. embassy in all the U.S. embassies to institute a remote workplace. And like I told my team every single morning at 2.30 in the morning, do you, do you want to be, you know, Barnes & Noble or do you want to be Amazon? Times are changing. We have to adjust. And I also told them, I said, look, at most probably this virus came from a bat, got into a bottle, and then somehow got out from the Wuhan lab and attacks come on the American people from all different types of areas. And I told them, to be quite honest, I said, we're not gonna have a Benghazi here in U.S. Embassy Reykjavik. I'm gonna protect you, I'm gonna protect your family, and we're gonna make sure that I'm doing my job as U.S. Ambassador. And when things stabilized and the body bags were not building up in front of uh, New York hospitals, as we all terribly remember, I uh, chartered a private jet out of my own money to uh, go back in uh, Iceland. And remember, whenever you stand up a team in Iceland during COVID, you're not only putting that individual at risk, you're putting their families, their grandparents and all at risk. So uh, tremendous job. It was all, you know, kind of fake news. Mike Pompeo never ordered me to go back. Uh, as everyone knows, when you're uh, an ambassador, you work for one person and that's at the pleasure of the President of the United States. Yeah, and he refused to comment on uh, Very revealing. One, one of the stories yeah. that, uh, I think it was Politico. Yeah. Um, but anyway, people can research that themselves. 100%, um, and um, the I, conversation I had with Mike Pompeo, I'm very transparent about too. Hey Mike, why are we talking, Jeff? Well, I wanted to update you. Oh really, when are you going back? You know, in May, how are you going back? Private jet, so why are we talking? All right, so let's, that's let's take a break. We'll come back and let's start talking about the campaign and some of the issues, all right? Absolutely. And we'll be right back. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. 
and last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Dr. Jeff Gunther. He is a Republican candidate for U.S. Senate. You are not the chosen one. <laughs> Sam Brown uh, ran previously for the U.S. Senate, lost in the primary to Adam Laxalt, uh, but he's been picked up by the National Republican Party. Um, what are your thoughts on that, and how do you plan to oppose that when there's a wall of money coming down in his favor? Um, a couple things. I think the chosen one that matters is the people of Nevada. And if you look at how I'm doing at the polls, we are becoming the chosen one. Uh, my opponent, Sam Brown, look at, he lost before that. He lost in Texas. He did a little small run for the assembly, lost that, and then he lost to Adam Laxalt. So in politics, the reality is that if you lose three times in a row in a primary, the likelihood of you winning again is really quite low. For myself, uh, I did quite well. Um, I was confirmed 100 to 0 by the U.S. Senate. The campaign's going tremendously well. Um, as much as they want to pretend like we're not in the race, boy, are we. And uh, look at the uh, NRSC, uh, the National Republican Senatorial Committee, those who are supported by uh, Mitch McConnell, and I'm not a Mitch McConnell fan, um, they're coming after me. Why? Because they're worried because I have tremendous popular support. I'm President Trump's former U.S. ambassador. Uh, I've treated 10,000 skin cancer patients here in Nevada. I've been a resident here for five years. And uh, people are realizing, gee, this is a breath of fresh air. You're not doing this for the money. You're not doing it because you're a career politician. You're doing what George Washington envisioned, is that people would be in society, they'd serve in the government, and then they'd go back and do something else. Okay, so, so are you saying that if you were elected, you would be a one-term senator or a two-term sen senator? Well, I, I, think it's, I think, you know, putting a limit on terms and, and things like that is not where I would be right now. What I could tell you is that we're surging in the poll. We're doing incredibly well. Okay, can and you share any numbers with us? Because, uh, I mean, yet, you know, as we're taping this, um, you I know, they release numbers that uh, President Trump is 12 or 13 points ahead correct. Of, That's correct. of President Biden correct. in the state of Nevada. So this is a time where we could certainly see what happened in 2014, where a lot of Republicans that were not expected to win suddenly won because they were coattails. Correct. And there will be huge coattails with President Trump, especially. Okay, but can you share numbers with us? I'm going to let my team release the poll numbers as they come out. Okay, would uh, you please make sure I'm on the email list uh, that gets that? Absolutely, and that's where you deserve to be because you're great work. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, but, but let me ask you this. Um, at this point, um, even though you have a relationship with President Trump, he made your ambassador mm -hmm. to Iceland, he has not endorsed you yet. Are you expecting an endorsement from President Trump? What I found working for President Trump, working with him as part of his administration, is President Trump knows exactly what he's doing. And what President Trump doesn't need are people to second guess him, to push themselves on him. I could tell you he was incredibly proud of the work that we did when we were in Iceland. He said so. Uh, his whole team sees the great campaign that we're running because I am the America first. I'm 110% pro-Trump. My opponent, Sam Brown, Scam Brown, Captain Scam Brown, whatever people want to call him, he refuses to even talk about President Trump. We were just at the Nevada convention. Uh, up in Tahoe. And if you looked at our booth, it's 110% pro-Trump, you know, the great comeback, you know, Gunter and Trump. And you look at Sam's booth, zero, crickets, nothing. So what's really nice is, remember, politics is about contrast. It really is. People want to know the difference between you and someone else. And I am 110% pro-Trump, and Sam is aligned with Mitch McConnell. And that's really, that's really the choice in this, in this campaign. Do you want someone who's pro-Trump? Or do you want someone who's pro Mitch McConnell and Nikki Haley? And I'm not bashful about saying that. I want the voters to know 
who they are voting for and who they think is going to give them the best representation and really fight for them in Washington, D.C. Um, and you're certainly spending a lot of money. Um, I don't know what percentage of your funds have come from donations versus what you're loaning your campaign. But as I sit here in Las Vegas at night watching television, you're all over the airwaves. So you're at, c can you share what kind of money you're prepared uh, uh, to invest in this campaign? Absolutely, whatever it takes. I think I've put in well over three million at this point. And the reality is America is at stake. We can't in what afford- way? In, in what, what way? way? I mean, you can just go down the list. Let's talk about Let's the border. Do Let's do it. Let's talk about the, d the border. No matter what President Biden wants to tell us, the border is wide open. It's a disaster. And what does that mean? It means that people are coming into this country, probably 18 million people we're going to have in this country, you know, nearly four to five times the size of the population here in Nevada. They're coming across the border. Okay. So what does that create? It creates fentanyl deaths, 100,000 plus fentanyl deaths. It creates crime. We have okay. literally proof. Can literally, I, can I, can sure, I, can please I just, jump right in. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, want, I want it to be a conversation. Uh -huh. um, you know, I've followed immigration since 1977. Uh-huh. And what it takes to get immigration reform of any kind is the Congress to step up. And that's who haven't stepped up. I mean, one can lay blame at presidents, and you can go back all the way uh, to Ronald Reagan, who was the last person who actually accomplished something with immigration in 1986. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. And, you know, we, we hear all this discussion about the border, rightly so, but it's the Congress's fault. They have not stepped up. The, the Senate has not stepped up. The leadership, if one wants to go back and research what happened in 84, 85, and 86 to get us to the point uh, where the Reagan bill was signed, we don't have the kind of leadership. The last time we saw anything close uh, was um, actually President George W. Bush, John McCain, and Harry Reid. And then McCain decided to run for president, and that blew that whole thing up. So it has to start with the Senate and the House. And we, we, we're seeing nothing that suggests that we're going to see anything done there. Certainly not this year. Can I gently and respectfully push no, back no, on no, you? Of course you can. Build the wall. But, if you okay. want to stop people from coming into your house, what do you do? You have a fence and you lock your door. This is America. And I agree. We need a group team to come out with solutions. But first of leadership, of, of we need we need a president who's going to finish the wall. And the reality is once that wall is built, as it was almost done in the prior administration, immigration was under much, much, much better control. And right now they've not only had problems building the wall or you know, basically making it wide open, but what about Remain in Mexico policy? Um, President Biden got rid of Remain in Mexico policy. What about Title 42? They got rid of Title 42. So all those things, all of them combined together, not finishing the wall or just having it wide open, getting rid of Remain in Mexico, getting rid of Title 42, you know what happens? 18 million uh, illegals and also, to be quite honest, invaders in this country. I have one other thing to add to it. Think about it, all the Chinese nationals that are coming into our country. These are not individuals necessarily looking for a better life you know, in, in Latin America. These are individuals that somehow left China and now are coming across our wide open border. Okay, so let me... That's let, not a good thing for let, America. Let me give you a couple of other things. Sure. So number one, you build a wall, they build a tunnel. And we can look to Gaza and see what the result of that is. And they've been bringing drugs into this country from Mexico, uh, from the cartels in Colombia for years. And so just building a wall is not the only answer. What we need to do is actually build an infrastructure in our country that allows people to come to the country legally. Because even though potentially there may be people who are the evildoers, the vast majority of people wanting to come to this country are coming for a better life. If you're a terrorist, for example, you don't need to come through the jungles to get to the United States and cross the border. You can buy a ticket and fly on a plane on a tourist visa and come to the United States. It's not that difficult to come in. So I think the reality is that we don't have a system and we haven't had a system for decades that makes any sense. The other side of it is we need the workers here in Nevada. We need workers in construction. We need workers in hospitality. Everybody's dying for workers. Where are they going to come from? We need people, you know, we want Social Security and Medicare to continue to succeed. 
How do we do that unless we have 16 em uh, employees for every person on Medicaid and Medicare? But it has to come from the Congress, does it not? I have to push back. No, no, of course you. you're fine. What, what that, that's why we're what, here. What President Biden and Jackie Rosen have created is they've turned the cartels into a travel agency, into Expedia. Do you know that right now the cartels are making $2 billion transporting people across that border? These are cartels that are not only importing drugs, but we've added a whole new travel business to the cartel. Right, but is and, that the Mexican And, and remember, the cost of doing business, if all of a sudden I said, you can't walk across the border, you have to dig a tunnel, what that does is it creates an additional cost in the cartel and it's obstruction. And I'll even push back even more. The analogy, the wall that we had in Gaza, uh, the Israelis had worked tremendously well. It worked tremendously well for a long time. If we're going to drag Gaza into this, the reality of they No, been, I'm just, I was just yeah, talking about tunnels. Yeah, but I'm saying, I'm saying you know, the, the, there is absolutely, uh, the Israeli government does not have, and let's put it this way, those tunnels were being funded with billions and billions and billions of dollars from the United Nations and everyone else. And also remember, they've had 20 years to build those tunnels. The concept and the belief that we should not have a wall protecting America I believe is fundamentally flawed. I do believe the President of the United States has tremendous authority and power when it comes to our immigration policies. And I, I'm a guy who believes that we have to have all the above. So I agree with you that we need more engagement, more involvement from Congress. But remember, uh, Barack Obama and Joe Biden have had a lot of support and, uh, from, from them and they haven't been able to get the job done on a bipartisan thing. We have to build the wall and to be quite honest, we have to deport them all. Those individuals that came in in the last three years really need to be found and strongly deported to protect our country and to protect our democracy. And that's, All that's right. a straight up answer. Well, let's, let's take a break. We can continue uh -huh. this right that's after great. this time out. Thank you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries, to our newest innovators. From the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Story County is leading Nevada. Home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across Northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. Turn your clunker into a caddy during the Cadillac and Cash giveaways at Tamarack Casino. Weekly cash drawings including 5,000 cash and one top prize of $10,000. Win the grand prize of a Cadillac CT4 or 40,000 in cash. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Dr. Jeff Gunther. He's the Republican candidate for U.S. Senate. Um, Sam Brown has not been out very public. We're glad that you are here. We have invited Sam Brown to be on the program. We have not heard back at this point in time. He certainly was on the program in his last campaign, debated Adam Laxalt on this program. We would love to do a debate with you and Sam Brown on this program. Would you be willing to do that? Any time, any place. It could be two in the morning. Sam, 
The voters of Nevada deserve it. And that's a generous offer that you're receiving right now. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, because you're talking directly to my audience here. <laughs> let, let me ask you this. Um, have you had any contact, your campaign, with their campaign to set up any debates at this point? Uh, we would love to. But, but, but no conversations no, so far? No, no conversations. But if it starts right here, again, Sam, the voters need to know you can't hang out in Joe Biden's basement anymore. You can't be the puppet for Mitch McConnell. Bring it on, baby. Let's have a debate and let's let the voters the voters of Nevada decide, not the D.C. elites. Okay, let me ask you this now. You just said hanging out in the basement of Joe Biden. Yes. I don't know what you mean by well, that. Well, remember when Joe Biden ran his campaign against Donald Trump. Oh, oh, you, you know, mean like Joe Biden, well, like not Joe Biden. hanging with not Joe Biden. Not literally, but, but maybe Mitch McConnell's basement or Nikki Haley's basement. Um, but the reality is the people of Nevada need to decide. They need to decide, make their own decision. This is a battle-born state. We're fiercely independent people, and they have to decide. So kind of running this kind of like Biden basement campaign where you have a bunch of proxies doing stuff for you. They think they can get away with it, but we're surging in the polls. You'll see the poll results. And the people of Nevada deserve, like you're doing here on your show today, a real substantive discussion so they can really see the difference between the candidates. And that's the beauty of what we're doing here today on your show. And that's why I say... You know, Sam, bring it on, baby. We're well, we, waiting for you. We would love to have the debate right here on this program. Uh, I thank. I you. make that commitment to you. I thank you for coming in. Please come back before we get to the primary, and we'll look forward to hearing back from the Brown campaign, and we'll keep you posted. Thank you for being here. God bless you for all your great work. Thank you, and we'll be right back. Here on 7 at 7, we're bringing you the local headlines in just seven minutes. We've got you covered in the morning, evening, and for all breaking news in between and as it happens. Life is busy and we don't waste your time. Join us for local news now streaming on our YouTube page. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to CarsonCityGreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. Calamity. It lurks around every corner. Or not. That's why UMC Quick Care is around every corner with locations around the valley. UMC Quick Care. For all your small calamities. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suite. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers coming to you from the Ahern Hotel in Las Vegas. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com. You can also download podcasts and show wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.